And we have new information this morning challenging Rolling Stone's account of an alleged gang rape at the University of Virginia. The magazine admits mistakes in that story about a student identified as Jackie. Juliana Goldman is in Charlottesville, Virginia, where she talked to students at the center of the scandal. Juliana, good morning. Good morning. CBS News has now talked with all three of the students and friends mentioned in the article as having spoken with and seen Jackie the night of the assault. All three of their accounts are very similar and yet very different from Jackie's. One of those students is Alex. He's a third year student here at UVA. He says he first read the article not realizing he'd be a central figure. I, you know, slowly dawned on me that this was you know, in fact, the story that Jackie, you know, similar to the story Jackie had told me in some ways. Alex, who asked we only use his first name, said he realized he was the Andy in the article, identified as a friend of Jackie's who saw her after an alleged gang rape at a UVA fraternity house in 2012. In the article, Jackie is described as shaking and bloody after the alleged attack, but that instead of seeking help, her friends launched into a heated discussion about the social price of reporting the incident, fearing it might damage their reputations. Alex says that account is false. Are you hurt by it? I mean, Jackie and I aren't really close, and I know that she, you know, is a very good storyteller, so I, you know, it's, no, I'm, I'm a little confused. I wish I knew, you know, sort of why. She decided to portray everybody who, you know, tried to help her as somehow horrible sort of animal house frat boys, but, you know, I'm not sure. Alex says he does not remember Jackie appearing physically injured, but that he and another friend, identified as Randall in the article, stayed with her through the night at her request and encouraged her to get help. Randall spoke with CBS News in After silhouette under the condition that we not use his real name. And what do you remember? It was pretty obvious that she had went through some kind of a traumatic experience. She kept looking around like someone was going to jump out of the dark, and it was clear that she had been crying. Alex and Randall said Jackie told them that she and her date for the evening had stopped at his fraternity house, and he invited her upstairs. When she got to that room, the door was locked, and she was forced to perform oral sex on five men who were in the room. But now, given the inconsistencies in the Rolling Stone story and his own experience with Jackie that night, Randall says he's not sure who or what to believe. The piece that doesn't fit for me is the way that she acted on the night of the incident. It all felt incredibly genuine. And that's the one thing that's out of place that's keeping me from saying that, yes, I think that's what happened. Because Alex Randall and the third friend who still wants to be identified as Cindy said they have never heard from Rolling Stone seeking their side of the story. All three are cooperating with the Charlottesville police investigation looking into what happened that night. Jackie's attorney, Rolling Stone, and the author of the article have declined to provide a comment. Jeff? Juliana, thank you very much.